I think a lot of things that people are very skeptical about about the nail perch fishing is fishing at night. The fact that you standing on a riverbank on hard ground on your own two feet, no boats obviously. It's a wilderness area, so there's the hippos, there's crocodiles, there's wild animals. It just makes it very different to fishing for any other fish any other way. Come on. <laughs> so we just want the hippos to move up and get sort of happy with themselves out of our perch area for the night so we can at least fish in peace and they can not feel stressed by our presence as well. For me, like once you've done it a few times here in this place, it's like it just it just doesn't stack up as an argument. I mean I would you know I'd come out here, you spend a few nights on the rocks, in the riverbed, in the open, under the stars, listening to the sounds of the bush. You don't even have to be fishing to for that to be an experience in itself. Let alone if you have a rod in your hand fishing a pool where you might hook a hundred pound fish. I mean, why wouldn't you want to do that? Switch off the light, please. Someone who works very closely with the company was on a quest for a Nile perch fishery, or an intact Nile perch fishery. And um, after many dead ends, got in touch with the owner of this concession, you know, to say like, hey, there's a river in your area, are there any Nile perch? Uh, couldn't actually send a photo of a, of a fish that had died, got confused and ended up dying, but it was more than 100 kgs. So that kind of caught their attention and uh, guys the idea that maybe they'd found what they were looking for. From there very quickly, send guys up exploratory missions. They'd identified this as a potential area, figured a few things out, another exploratory mission the next year, and here we are in the second season um, guiding clients to this new destination. Aiden's just pushing the road and they've lit a, a fire that's a bit too big for us to go through, so we're just gonna wait a moment and then head through. You'll notice there's a couple of guys that'll jump on in the morning. They're often carrying a weapon. We often send them out just to check the area for dangerous game. And then for the artisanal miners and, and poachers that often come from Nigeria to make sure that um, the people are protected and our clients are safe at all times. One of the cameras not not Africa. It's, it's just on its own outer world experience. <laughs> we find ourselves kind of north western Cameroon, which even by Cameroon standards is pretty remote. There's unchanged wildlife area. Nothing's been fenced. There's no barely any roads. Um, yeah, the wildlife that is here has, has always been here for generations and generations. The most dangerous animal you're going to encounter is the hippo, and especially when the water is like it is now. You've got to be a little bit careful. Sometimes they're sleeping under a bush or they're resting in the soft sand. So the hippo sleeping on the side here. It's obviously being kicked out. It's just got all these scratches on its side from another hippo from fighting. He's going to lick his wounds here and then when he's bigger, go take, his, take the pod back. We'll just go around like this. Shame. We'll often see perch around them and big tigers, so it's quite a draw card for us to go and fish around and interact with some hippos, which is cool. <laughs> An amazing thing about this river is that we get three different distinct species of tiger fish in the same river. The tiger fish generally can be anywhere there. They'll come out of out of water that you would swear, you know, it was only for brown shark. Very impressive shark teeth to look at. You know, they're not eating something whole like a perch or a dorado or something. They're taking a piece of a bigger fish. And that's why they hit so hard with power, because they just on a big fish, like a 20 pound. Feels like every single second that they're on the line, they are doing everything in their power to get off. The brevis being the more acrobatic of, of all the, the tiger fish species in Africa. Four feet in the air jumping, then they're six feet down diving around rocks. It's just a live wire fight, and you just kind of hang on and see how long you can last with it. And if you get it in, then it's almost like a bonus. Yeah, just on the end 
side here. A uh, little Nijabab, one of the yellow fish species at the moment, the most common one. You can see them right on the shelf here. But the thing is, if you can see them, they've most definitely easily seen you. There's a couple of big bobs. I've just seen another one on the other side. Um, yeah, you know, with the Niger Bob, it's it's quite technical. They sort of because they'll never leave the area they're in because it's safe. You know, you can you get your first cast in, and generally that's your best shot. Make a long cast. Be, just get it very close. I'm sure he'll eat. Um, if you mess that up, they, it's quite tricky because they won't leave the area. So you think you're still in with the shot, but really. You're just wasting your time casting against spooked fish. Yeah, I mean, this species of barb is, is its own thing, the Niger barb. Yeah, Niger Delta system uh, drainage, drainage basin. But it's part of a, a huge family that's incredibly successful in Africa. Like, pretty much every system throughout most of Africa has a, a species or a relative of the barb. Shortly after we fished many 12-hour days trying to figure out, we knew the perch were here, but we couldn't catch them. After that, we, we tried fishing at night and you know, quite quickly discovered that that's the solution, is that these perch feed from very small windows at night. So what you as an angler have to do, map out the area in your mind. Most of the time, you're not fishing with any lights on at all. So you've got to make sure that, that you maintain that darkness. For well, a lot of people who come here for the first time, it's otherworldly, it's bizarre, almost maybe a bit frightening. It's, it's not as scary as it looks, it's shallow. Yeah. It's getting crunch time yeah. here, starting to get nervous. So you often get an explosive strike, set the hook, and then all hull breaks loose, big run into the backing. You've got to try and put as much hurt onto the fish, and pull hard. But when the fish comes closer to the side, there's a lot of oysters and mussel beds and, you know, little sharp nooks and crannies that can cut you off. So you've got to often ease off the drag and then be gentle. Um, and we often have a fork stick, so when your line does tangle, we can push it away from the structure um, and, and hopefully land the fish. But obviously there's no guarantees in this game, um, especially when you're dealing with a fish of that size. Oh! The line and the fly got caught up on the rocky shelf, probably on an oyster, in an oyster bed. It was very tr tricky to get out of, so we cut, the line got cut, we just try to get it out. So just re-rigging quickly so we can get back in the action. Yeah, the fight is extraordinary, it's something different. It's, it's a really good challenge from an angling perspective and um, it's often very, very testing. So it's a special quarry to go for. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's a full, full, very cool African fish to target. That's, yeah, that's very special. Um, you know, things are changing so fast in Africa to find somewhere like as intact as this, almost by accident, is just that's, you know, the most incredible part of the whole thing. You know, sad reality is that Throughout Sahili in Africa, there are just too many cows, too many people, and, and a lot of rivers that used to be full of Nile perch and, and um, you know, used to be pristine, beautiful rivers like this have slowly you know, wasted away to, to overgrazing and are quite full of sand now. And, and to find you know, big populations of, of normal to large sized perch is just unheard of. So, We've been able to, to set up an operation on you know, 120 kilometers of this river. And the, the key goal would, would be to, to keep it intact, to keep it as it is. It's, it's a pristine river. Jeez, who knows how many species of fish. We're slowly you know, working our way through just identifying a lot of the fish. And um, the end goal is, is always going to be to protect and conserve this, this fishery and this, the surroundings. Mm -hmm.